All right, this podcast is brought to you by Audible. What do you know about Audible, Katrina? I know that uh, calling an Audible is not as common of a phrase as you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you know about Audible, the audiobook company? I know if you use our link to test out Audible, you get one free audiobook. And a free month of service. Fantastic. If you go to audibletrial.com slash mdxpods, you will get 30-day trial and one free audiobook. If you decide to sustain the membership, you actually basically get one free audiobook every single month. It's awesome. There's over 180,000 titles to choose from right now, and it's constantly growing, and you get to keep the book. Even if you cancel the service, you get to keep the book. So it's one of those rare services where you can do the free trial and keep the thing that you got. So That's check it out. Sweet. It helps us out a lot. Um, I'm currently listening to It from Stephen King. Um, it's I great. just finished listening to uh, Pride and Prejudice. Awesome. But yeah, you check it out. LA drive time. You got to have something to listen to. It's definitely worth it. It is a monster of a book. Like I was actually at Barnes & Noble yesterday and I looked at the the book. It's like four inches thick. I don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So I listen to it during my commutes when I'm not listening to podcasts. I'm about three quarters of the way through and it's 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 awesome. Like. Oof. It's really cool having somebody read it to you and do the different voices and stuff. It's fun. I really enjoy it. So if you're interested in audiobooks, check it out. It helps us out a lot. And on with the show. Ruin My Childhood. Hello, and thank you for listening to Ruin My Childhood, the podcast where we decide if some things are better left in the past. I'm Kat. And I'm Mike. And today we are talking about Twister. Ooh. Yeah. Now, Mike was a little <laughs> bit hesitant to do this movie, but this was one of the few movies that we actually owned on VHS. And then when DVD came out, we owned that too. So, eh, I mean, on one hand, it is still a childhood movie. But on the other hand, this is one of those films that I've consistently watched pretty much once a year since I was 10 years old. Yeah, and we uh, watched this movie earlier this year when Bill Paxton passed away as kind of our uh, tribute Homage. to him. It was, <laughs> it was between this, Terminator, or Aliens, but we decided a movie where he dies was probably not the one to watch. <laughs> um, so yeah, we decided to watch this one. Jeez. And this movie was not a movie that I watched a bunch as a child. Like I did see it you know, when I was probably seven or eight years old. But it wasn't mm. one that I owned, so I didn't watch over and over and over again. See, Even I going... think we owned it and watched it so often because my dad worked for FEMA. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Emergency management, you know, you take your work home. Right. Like, in this movie, all that I really remember, because I've only seen it a handful of times, like, I think two or three times, I remember the flying cows, and I remember they were just trying to put some sort of equipment up into the tornado and i just remember they had to use aluminum cans and we watched we it earlier watched this, this year. movie several times together no, how do you not remember more of it we've been not what i don't think we've only watched it like twice together and this is i think no. both times definitely the last time we were drinking wine and stuff and i think i didn't really care about it it's not a movie <laughs> that i super loved as a kid so i, did, I haven't really put a lot of uh, thought into this movie I love this movie, and since I do watch it all the time, I mean, I'm not really going into this blind. I think it still holds up, and I think you're still going to enjoy it. <laughs> but I hope so. I don't know. You're kind of finicky. Yeah, well, we'll see. Yeah. Should we just let's, go watch it? Yeah, let's just go. Yeah. The critics are blown away. It's coming! A one-of-a-kind experience. Like Jaws and Jurassic Park. Right! Truly amazing. You got to get out of there! Run! It's gonna drop right on us! You have never seen anything like it before. Find something to grab a hold of! Twister. All right, we are back from watching Twister, and I still love it. What about you? It was it was all right. Um, I liked it. I I wouldn't say that I loved it. There were some things that were great about it. There were some things that were not so great about it. Right. I completely forgot that Carrie Always was in this movie. It's not Carrie. I know. Hughes, I feel it's like Carrie Always. It's so weird. I I watch it all the time, and I still consistently forget that he's in this. And Philip and Seymour I think it's Hoffman. Because, right. And I think it's because um, Carrie doesn't have his you know quintessential British accent in this movie. You kind of forget it's him. Yeah, I just think he's one of those actors who did 
he was working a lot. Like he was trying to be in a little bit of everything and just keep his career going after Princess Bride because everyone just mm-hmm. thinks of him as Princess Bride or uh, or the Robin Hood men in tights, Robin Hood. Those so, are great things to be known for, though. They are, but if you want to be, you know, especially in the 90s, like the 80s and 90s, people were typecast. Right. So he definitely was trying to just do a lot of things. He did this. He did Liar, Liar. But these are movies that he's not known for, even though he's, you know, a pretty big part of them. Right. Saw. So, <laughs> Saw. so now that I've watched this, I mean, mm, I think there were a couple things that I've always just sort of forgiven about the movie because it came out in what, 94 or 96? 96. Yeah, it came out in 96. But I, since I was looking for it, I was still pleasantly surprised by most of the special effects. Like the uh, smaller tornadoes looked pretty good. And like there was that part where there was like two and then it was three and then back the two little tornadoes over the river. That right. actually looked pretty good. Well, and I think the big tornadoes did look pretty good, but I think that they were specifically done to look more cinematic because I think when you see actual footage of a big tornado up close, it kind of looks like nothing. It's just like gray. It's gray. It's misty. The sky is very dark. There's very little to see in reality when you're looking, you know, face to face right. with a giant tornado. So I think they had to they darkened you know, it up, put ham more it up a little in bit, it, put lightning well, in no, it. I think I think they, they kept the skies quite a bit lighter than they are in reality, because when a tornado is about to blast through your house, the skies turn green, they turn purple, everything gets really, really dark. Well, what's interesting and... about that, since you mentioned the purple and green, like there are a couple points throughout the movie where Bill Paxton's like a tornado whisperer and he's better at tracking tornadoes than all the computers are. And he'll look around and like every time he gets this kind of like aha moment, I'm going to predict one. The sky does change and there's a couple of times where they mention it like, oh, the sky's a little green, something's going to happen. But then when you actually see the tornadoes, it's it's not like that. Right. But in like in real life, anyone who's ever been in the presence of a tornado, the next time the sky turns that specific shade of color, like your blood runs cold. You know very specifically what's about to happen. Right. Because it's very consistent unless you're like over a large body of water. So, I mean, there are some things that obviously are not true to life that I wasn't really expecting because I just never really thought about it before when I watched them. But now that I've watched it, you know, I think it really is just for the cinematic quality right. and just so it's more visually striking because when you're, you've got an entire screen just full of gray or greenish gray, you know, there's not much to look at and right. hold, the, hold the eye. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You got to make it more interesting than what things actually are. So do we want to do like a little bit of a synopsis of this, like a 30 yeah. second synopsis? Yeah, this is pretty easy. So basically in a nutshell... There is this group of storm chasers led by Helen Hunt, who used who was married to Joe. Bill Paxton's character, Bill, whose name is Bill, <laughs> and he comes into town specifically for her to sign divorce papers, and he's there with his new fiance. And the more they attractive up... version of Terry Hatcher, right? Exactly, <laughs> um, Melissa. So, Melissa. So they decide to chase a storm hick. He's going to give her like one day because she's so close to getting Dorothy, which is the scientific equipment that they want to send up inside a tornado to track it. So that's basically the plot is they spend a day or two going and chasing storms. Meanwhile, they're also in competition with Carrie Elwes's character who's got like corporate sponsors and he doesn't care about the science. And that's basically it. It's just about them trying to get this equipment up into a tornado and they're just chasing a ton of tornadoes throughout the movie Mm -hmm. pretty pretty straightforward plot you know what's interesting about this film that i'd never really thought about until today is that storm chasers were really the first people to see the extreme signs of climate change and this was way back in 96 Right. And even back then, it was undeniable for t- tornado chasers that we were having freak storms. So, like, in the beginning of this movie, the F5, which is, like, the highest grade of tornado, is something of, you know, an enigma. It's something, there was an F5 that killed Joe's father in the beginning of the movie, and that's sort of what drives her character and her passion, you know, for, for chasing these storms, because she wants to advance the warning systems. And... The F5 well, was something none of them that. have seen. 
except for her because, you yeah. know, it swallowed her dad. But I mean, now these are tornadoes that are happening almost like bi yearly. They're destroying entire swaths of Kansas and like wreaking absolutely yeah it's it's crazy horrific how big we're getting consequences all these storms right now. but you know it's interesting that they do hint at that in this movie a little bit that they're having unusual seasons they're having unusual storms they're having more tornadoes per storm than what they've ever seen before and that's also something that's sort of driving them they're not overtly saying oh it's climate change but they're saying that there's an unusual pattern happening and right. I think that's really interesting for ninety six yeah totally. I do have a few problems with this movie. Um, I'm just going to get them out there now. First <laughs> off, Carrie Elway's this character is kind of a jerk. You know, he's he stole Bill Paxton's designs for the sensors. They basically got their own version of Dorothy that, you know, looks sleeker and it looks more Dorothy and... is basically like a, a can, a giant can that they put in the back of a truck and it has sensors inside of it and ideally you place it in the path of the tornado and the sensors fly up into the funnel and transmit back data. Exactly right. So Bill Paxton is <laughs> Thank initially... Thank you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Paxton is initially like, oh, corporate sponsors, he's not in it for the science, he just wants the money for right. it. Like, I don't think there's that much money in storm chasing back then. This was before reality TV and oh people my gosh. really filming them. Yeah. But... You know, he he immediately goes up, and it's a really funny scene. Like, you see him, he's, like, getting interviewed. Carrie always his character. And you think that Bill Paxton's going to run up and just, like, sucker punch or deck him, but he just, like, knocks his hat off. <laughs> I love he's that. He's like, you stole my designs. <laughs> <laughs> right? And everything. And it's like, dude, if, you, if you're about the science and you just want it, like, wouldn't you want this corporate guy who has all these resources yeah. to be successful and just to get it out there? Right. Like, if, yeah. as long as anybody gets it done, like... Come on. Like, I could understand so, them having beef, like a little bit of a beef from that point forward because he did pretty much like overtly rip off his design. But before then, I mean, he's just doing the same thing you are. The end goal is the same to exactly. have better warning systems. What do you care if he's doing it with more money? Right. Well, and so the thing that bothers me about the movie is this whole time he's set up to be like the bad guy of the movie. Right. And, you know, because every movie needs to have a bad guy. It can't just be the storm. Yeah. So throughout the movie, you know, he's kind of a jerk. He says some, like, offhand remarks. But throughout the movie, you can definitely tell that Carrie Elwes' character admires Bill Paxton's character, Bill, and, and Joe, played by Helen Hunt, that because they're con he's constantly, like, waiting to see what they're going to do. And he says a few things that show, like, these guys are better at it than him. Mm -hmm. But throughout the movie, like, they keep making snide remarks about him, and he's, you know, kind of a jerk. And throughout the movie, he's becoming more and more of a jerk. And then he gets killed by the tornado. And, like, I feel like the makers of this movie wanted you to be, like, cheer that moment. Like, he got his comeuppance. Like, you definitely want him to get some some sort of comeuppance. But you it would rather, I, it would be, I would rather it be get smacked Bill around and Joe. A little. Bill and Joe being successful. Or, like you said, maybe he gets in a, he gets caught in the storm a little bit. And maybe one of the good guys is take one of their big trucks and kind of ram him out of the path and save him or something. But to show like, Hey, you know, we helped you out. Right. But like, he wasn't that bad of a guy that he deserved to die. <laughs> I know. And the movie made it seem like <laughs> his he driver gets it. impaled. Yeah. <laughs> so his driver gets impaled by like this like giant antenna or part of like a windmill tower. And then he kind of, you see the look in his eyes like, Oh crap. And like, he has his like moment where he gets what he deserves. And it's like, he didn't deserve to die. Let's be real. Right. And I, I just feel like, I mean, the storm chasing community, it's probably a little bit bigger now than it used to be, but it is a really small, close knit community. They're talking to each other on radio. They're trying to get each other out of harm's way. Cause no one wants someone to die. No. And like when Bill Paxton passed away this year, the, um, like the organization that oversees a lot of the storm chasers, they like organized and got everyone's trackers to spell out like rest in peace, Bill or Aww. something like that. That's I don't remember sweet. exactly what it is, but they did like a uh, something to commemorate him because Twister really did do a lot for that um, community. Right. And that means a lot more funding and a lot more education. Exactly. And, and now um, warning systems are up to what, like 15 minutes? Advanced. 13 minutes. That's pretty amazing considering yeah, there before, were sometimes people had no warning. Well, in this they said they didn't know anything until uh, basically it hit three the minutes. <laughs> yeah. So, that, yeah, that's crazy. So now they know. I mean, 15 minutes is significantly better. That's enough time to 
get your whole family down to the basement, grab a few mm-hmm. essential supplies, if, you know, just in case you get buried. I mean, like if, if you, if you insist on keep, you know, building your house in Tornado Alley like a psychopath. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, a whole other can of worms. <laughs> I definitely couldn't. Um, now, this is not a tornado thing, but I'll, I'll keep it as brief as I can. When Hurricane Katrina happened, my water polo team in high school, a couple members like foster familyed some of these people from from uh, Louisiana, and they came and stayed with us here in California, and they played water polo with us during the summer. And they were saying, I couldn't live out here in California where the earth literally falls beneath your feet during know, the earthquake. Right? It's like, it's like we're one, our it. big earthquakes, big, big destructive earthquakes happen, you know, every 50 to 100 years. You know, we have, you know, unfortunately we had that one in, you know, Napa a couple years ago. We're not living in like, a state where half of it is below the flood line. Right. Well, <laughs> tornadoes literally, so tornadoes happen in every continent except for Antarctica. They happen but, pretty much in every state, too. There are anomalies, yeah. but they happen. There are anomalies, but there are l- thousands, anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 tornadoes Oof. in basically the Bible Belt <laughs> <laughs> um, every year. And it's like, how can you live in an area where you're getting... But yeah, basically every year they've got to deal with this stuff. Mm-hmm. Every single year, something of theirs gets destroyed. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, that's that's my, my thing on Twitter. Right, like they think we're crazy because the ground literally shakes beneath us and could, you know, conceivably just split open and swallow us whole. But I think tornadoes are a little bit scarier. I agree. And they're stronger than hurricanes right. than winds. Like our houses are built specifically to withstand earthquakes. And in California, if a building is not built to withstand an earthquake, like there's a plaque by the door and you know going into that structure that you gonna die. You might die. <laughs> so, you know, I think we've got a leg up on that one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other problem. What? Oh, go ahead. You go ahead. Okay. The other problem I had with this movie is throughout the movie, uh, Joe, played by Helen Hunt, takes a lot of risks. And it turns out like, you know, they have like a come into Jesus kind of moment where she feels guilty for her father getting killed for some reason, well, even though it's, she was a child and it's not her fault. She does take a lot of stupid risks, but at the same time, like, this is an emotional turning point for her. And oh, it is. it's kind of like they're they're coming to the end of their opportunity to use Dorothy, for one thing, which is like her entire life's turmoil. Right. And it's, you know, she's got to sign those divorce papers. So she's not like yeah, in a clear headspace. <laughs> right. But my problem is not that she's making She endangers these, like, other people a lot. She's endangering other people, but no, the problem is there's a couple different scenes where she gets out of the car beyond what was necessary. So, like, Bill Paxton or has to go and, like, make sure she's safe. So, towards the beginning of the movie, like, the first tornado that we see with the grown-up characters, they um, drive into a ditch and they can't get out. And they go under this little bridge thing, and she crawls out from under the bridge because she wants to see the tornado Mm -hmm. but these guys are outside during a tornado and you just see dirt and debris flying everywhere right and these guys come out with not a scratch like they would still be it would be like getting sandblasted yeah your hair alone would be hurting you whipping you in the eyes and stuff (laughs) like that and they're able to keep their eyes open in the storms which is crazy they're like in the center of the funnel and they're like looking up into it like no you you would be covering your head You'd be covering your right. vital organs. You'd be trying to survive. And you would be cut up pretty bad. Well, and then at the climax of the movie, it's it's a pretty funny scene. So they go, and it's the biggest tornado they've ever seen. Like, it's an F5 again. Mm-hmm. And they go into a barn, and then you just see, like, saws and sickles and pickaxes. Oh, like, my all God. Who of, are like, these crazy. people? It's like farmers. Yeah. They're farmers. They're farmers. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> they, they would have the all these nowhere. <laughs> right. Um... So they end up like running outside and they go to this like little shack that has like pipes that are like cemented into the ground and they get belts and they belt themselves in and eventually like the shack gets blown off and like they're holding on for dear life and you can see their like legs are flailing like they're getting picked up by the storm Mm -hmm. but they're belted in right and same thing no damage I know at all like randomly there is a point where Bill Paxton has like a small cut on his eye but it goes away that whole barn managed to fly away without hitting them but yeah it's, it's just insane that there was no damage to them really like the only person that you really see get hurt in this movie is the bearded driver guy right he gets hit by the rim yeah when they're all in that then they have him drive right after he gets a head injury (laughs) and then they have him drive it's a flesh wound (laughs) 
he looked super stunned. Like he looked like he got concussed. Right. Yeah. He was he was kind of freaked out. I mean, I'd be freaked out if like if basically uh, what was it a hubcap flew at my face and chose to like skim my forehead instead of decapitating me. Like yeah, I'd I be mean, a little bit shaken up. Right. <laughs> God, there's um, a lot of like dumb stuff in this movie. It's it's a fun movie. Like before, like I'm saying, some of these things are dumb, but it is a fun movie. Right. Like there's a part where uh, an entire house got picked up Dude, off the foundation. I, I was just looking at that street, note. It like tumbles in front it. of them. That's a solid house. Like kudos to them, whoever built it. Right. It's enti- It was like 100 percent intact, just off its foundation, <laughs> and then they drive along. through. <laughs> they just drive through, and Bill Paxton goes. I think we're going in. And he drives in. <laughs> it's so cheesy. And then they drive out the other side. Ah! Oh my God. I think we're going in. Of course, you know, yeah. his uh, his corporate sponsored, uh, at least for the movie purposes, his his truck looks fantastic. This entire his Dodge. film. His Dodge. Dodge Ram. Is it a Dodge Ram? Yeah. They had a lot of money to pump into movies back in the day. Yeah. <sighs> you know, the American auto industry hadn't failed yet. Oh, R.I.P. Um, so I've got a couple things, a couple things that yeah. I've got beef with. Uh, go, go. In the beginning of the movie, in the first couple minutes of the movie, they, uh, Joe's parents storm in. Oh, Joe, little Joe, was played by Alexa Vega. Weird. Spy kids. She was like super blonde in this. I would not have recognized her if I didn't look at the IMDb. But yeah, huh. little Joe. Alexa Vega. Um, they burst into her room. They, you know, wake her up. They're like, we've got to get underground. There's a tornado coming. They carry her downstairs. They leave the dog. Like, poor little Toby on his teeny tiny little legs is just chasing after them. And they, like, leave him for dead. And he barely makes it into the storm cellar because the dad has to open the door again and let him in. But they're in the storm cellar. And this is, like, setting the stage for Joe's entire, like, life story basically right the dad is holding the storm cellar door closed and this tornado it's an f5 it's massive it's like nothing anyone's ever seen you know it's kind of like hovering over their storm cellar he can't hold on to the door anymore the mom the mom and okay i don't want to be mean but the mom is like 300 pounds like she's a big girl she could get in there and help hold that door down what is going well, on? <laughs> the other problem is... And then they could have yes. just all gone to the back of the cellar, and when the door flies off, they would have been fine. You're right, because Joe and the mother and the dog are, like, in the back corner, and, like, the door gets ripped off. And takes the And they're fine. Like, the tornadoes are moving. They don't really stay in any one place for more than a few seconds. <laughs> Usually. Usually. But, yeah, he didn't need to hold that door like that. He could have just moved to the back and it would have been fine. Yeah, it, it, yeah that was kind of dumb. But then there would be no movie. <laughs> that's true <laughs> and um so the, there's something interesting that happens when when bill and the girlfriend first arrive on the scene and everyone's like oh you're back and he's like i'm not back um the girlfriend melissa and joe go into a diner and they're ordering drinks or whatever and they're getting ready to hit the road and she's like oh if you have to pee you know you should do it here because there's nowhere to stop and the girlfriend straight up is like you're still in love with him. right you're still in love with him i never in like the probably 50 some odd times i've watched this movie have never noticed that line it was just like it went over my head i did not care i was all about watching the tornadoes <laughs> well, I feel really bad for that character, Melissa. I, so I felt really she, bad for her this time around. For a couple different reasons. So she shows up, and initially, you know, it's very obvious that, you know, she likes Bill and everything. She likes good. it. Well, I mean, she's marrying him. So they go, I yeah, would hope right? so. Um, so they go through and they do the first. And she's like, she's interested in the tornado. She's like, yeah, this actually seems pretty interesting. I'll, I'll chase the tornado with you. So the first one, it, it goes by more or less uneventful for her. Like, Bill and. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Joe crashed that car, and then that truck gets lifted off and destroyed. And she's driving her nice, fancy red truck, and that Joe's truck falls from the sky, almost crushes her. And she's still, you know, like, oh, I'm shaking, but let's keep doing this, right? Well, then eventually, <laughs> Bill and Joe and her are in one truck, and they're driving. That's the scene where they see like the three tornadoes over the water. And the cows and are flying they- by. And the cows are flying by. And then they We've stop. We've got sisters. <laughs> We've got yeah, exactly. cows. <laughs> and they've got the three tornadoes. And they're right at the point where they're all kind of intersecting. So they're at a point. Like their truck is literally, he's got his brake. He's slamming on the brakes. And you see the truck is just spinning. 
on the ground, right? It doesn't get lifted off, but it's just spinning. And so she's traumatized at that point. Yeah. So she she's she's having some issues at that point. But then later on, after a big tornado, I don't remember which tornado is, they see like seven tornadoes in the course of a day or two. Mm-hmm. Um, they accidentally leave the radio on and Bill's like, you don't have to kill yourself over this. Your dad, it was not your fault. It was an accident. The blah, 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 blah. Trying to convince Joe that she doesn't need to go get herself killed in a tornado because her father died in a tornado. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, you've got something to live for. And she's like, what? He's like, you've got me. Yeah. And so she hears that and everything. So it's like, she goes down here expecting her divorce papers get filled out so she can get married and then she gets traumatized by a tornado and then finds out that her fiance is actually still in love with his wife yep like, yeah it's pretty messed up the whole thing is pretty yeah. messed up and i mean uh it, it's just like bill is this tornado expert like he knows better he knows the ins and outs he knows the risks there is no way in hell someone with that much experience would leave his fiance with zero experience and zero know-how on how to keep safe in a storm like that and let her drive her herself. own <laughs> yeah. well he does notice that so there's a point where so the first time around he says get in the truck and drive behind philip seymour hoffman's character right because those people character. are driving significantly further behind than the lead person yeah. so he's like follow him you'll be safe and then the next time he's like i really shouldn't have had you do that i apologize you'll be with me for the next time so he did notice and then they do talk about there's a scene where they go and visit joe's aunt in uh wakita mm -hmm. and uh they're like having dinner and everything they're talking about how crazy bill is in terms of tornadoes so it's it's, a, it's like an adrenaline thing for him he doesn't think clearly when he's in these right. things when he's in the chase like it's uh, well you know i kind of feel like bill has a bit of like an adrenal disorder um because <laughs> even when he's not chasing storms like bill is never happy in this entire movie like he's either on an adrenaline high from nearly getting killed by a tornado or he's super stressed about nothing right he's always stressed um, it's pretty funny. So there's a point in uh, where Bill and Joe are driving during the first tornado that they're chasing. And then they're like arguing and she's like, all right, so I don't remember exactly what they say, but it basically they're bickering about stuff. And then she's like, will you drive? And he's like, I am driving. Well, will you? And then like he almost crashes into a parked tractor. Right. And she's and then like they start super chill about it. It's super chill about it. And then they're just arguing. He's like, I'm happy. I'm happy. And everything's like, he is super stressed out about everything. Yeah. Poor Bill. Anything. Oh, we got to talk about the explosions. Oh, God. So this movie <laughs> was one of the first big movies to have CG. And they're like, they really use this movie to test a bunch of things. So um, while researching this movie, like there's a scene in the trailer where you see like a truck flying at them that they ended up cutting out from the trailer. Um, just because they wanted to show how photorealistic CG had gotten. Yeah. And for the most part, it looked pretty good. They actually, the cows were reskinned zebras from <laughs> Jumanji, Jumanji that came out the year before. Um, <laughs> and the tornadoes, like I said, looked pretty good. The smaller tornadoes looked great. I think the big tornadoes looked a little pixelated. I think there was too much detail that they were trying to put in. So I think it looked a little wonky. But throughout the movie, there was explosions. There was a point where like an... Um, a big rig with an oil tanker on it kind of thing explodes and it's just like the cheesiest most rectangular <laughs> pixelated fireball i have ever seen right it's bad and then there's there's other points where you see like a tornado will pick up and hit like a transformer or something and the same thing you just see like it almost looks like a clip art explosion that they just put in right like you could ignore anything else that doesn't look real but the explosions are just like meh in they look face. like Nintendo 64 <laughs> graphics. Yeah. Other than that, like the tornadoes looked pretty solid. I was impressed for the most part. Like even the big one, I was looking for it to not look good. Yeah. But like if you were just watching it, not like looking at it for a podcast, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Although but in that scene, it is a little odd to me that they're chasing a tornado and they wouldn't have thought to like watch out for being lined up with a whole bunch of power lines. Right. <laughs> Like, that's going to fall on you and kill you no matter what. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's super risky. That was that was an odd, odd thing. Um, I mean, there were, of course, like, there are going to be things that are not true to life when it comes to storms. Like, the amount of hail that is on the ground in certain scenes when they're approaching a tornado, like, their trucks would have spun out. There's no way you're driving on that. Plus, it gets so big that it would crack your windshield. 
Right. And you'd kind of have to ease back. (laughs) The windshield thing. So they eventually did crack the windshield on the Dodge. Yeah. But it drove me crazy because there's certain things like there's a point where a tricycle, which is made out of metal, and is getting picked up by a tornado that they say is like 200 and something miles per hour winds. And it just hits the uh, windshield and bounces off, but stays caught on the cab. Right. They're so just driving there, like, around the trike. <laughs> on it. It's like, there's no way that one would have shattered the windshield. Eh, trikes are pretty light. N- I think we need to no. test this. I think we need to find a Dodge truck and we need to find a tricycle. <laughs> <laughs> just swing a tricycle at it. Yeah. <laughs> that, oh, that's man. the only way we're going to settle this, Michael. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, uh, there were there are things that no matter what are not gonna look real and it's just for like practicality like tornadoes especially in the areas where they are they're full of mud basically they're wet right they're full of mud everything is gonna be splattered in mud and throughout this entire movie for the most part they remain somewhat mud free like that red truck does not have mud on it at any no. point which you is know, bizarre speaking about the red truck they ended up sacrificing the truck at they the did. end of the movie to make the thing heavy so there's a couple things that they figured out which kind of bugged me this time around that these guys being scientists didn't think of some of these things right dot so first- sensors are spheres why would you make something aerodynamic that you want to catch the wind and go up into a tornado exactly the other thing is i don't know how they kept doing this but they they t- keep taking this giant thing dorothy it's ginormous it's a good f- four feet tall it's probably got like a four to six foot diameter mm-hmm. like it fills up an entire truck bed the thing that's holding all the sensors and somehow people are just picking it up like it's nothing putting it on the ground yeah and then picking it back up and then they're like, oh, it's too light. It just keeps getting knocked around. It's not heavy enough to stay until it gets the... It's like, how did they not realize that it's not heavy enough? Like, you guys know how tornadoes work. So that bothered me. And then, mm-hmm. like you said, making the sensors round. So eventually what happens is the ant is a, uh, uh, a sculptor. She makes, like, these giant aluminum wind chime, windmill I kind of sculptures. I love sculptures. They're, really cool. they're so cool. Oh, they're beautiful. Um, and so... A big tornado hits the ant's house. So they like drive Aunt back Meg. to go rescue her. What? Aunt Meg. Aunt Meg. Um, they drive back to go like rescue her, and like good thing that like they make it look like it's so bad. Like they literally drive by people whose houses are gone, right? <laughs> completely gone, and they drive by her house, and it's like it's more or less intact. And they go in, and then it starts collapsing. It's like, well, you know, realistically, she had it better than most of the people in her neighborhood, <laughs> right? <laughs> but then they look over at the 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 sculptures and the windmills, and they go, oh. We need to make these things with fins <laughs> so the wind catches them. <laughs> and they just start cutting up aluminum cans. That's like, yeah, of course you need something that's going to, you know, fly. Right. Idiots. I don't understand how um, Melissa doesn't fly away at one point because she's like carrying around a beach umbrella for a good part of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Melissa. I genuinely um, felt bad for her this time around. Yeah, I, I definitely felt bad for her. I mean, Bill... Bill is just kind of a jerk, you know? He's supposed to be the hero of this movie, and I think looking at this through more discerning eyes, um, Bill comes off kind of kind of a jerk this time around. He's a around. control freak. Yeah, he's a control freak. He's got an adrenal disorder. Super well, rude to is, his fiance. He made a big thing about not wanting to be there, but then immediately takes over the entire operation. Because he's an addict. And the thing is, um, you made a comment about this, so like while watching it, like, you see, like, um, Joss Whedon's name pops up. Like, he actually helped. He was a script yeah. doctor for this movie. There were and a so lot of like, big oh. names on this early on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but you made a comment, like, oh, maybe this is where he started his, like, strong female role kind of thing. Right. Because, like, Joe at the beginning of the movie, you just see her, like, whipping all these guys in shape. Getting I do line, really like, love that. That's ship. not something that I had ever really thought about before. But yeah, she was like one of the first really strong female leads that was super capable, knew what they were doing, didn't need a man to rescue her. But then a man comes in and takes over her entire operation. Yeah. Well, and I think I think it's a little bit different because they were a team before and right. they just work so well together. And that's supposed to be that dynamic. I guess so. I guess so. I guess so. But I still feel, felt it was a little weird. It was unusual how many big names there were on this project that um, 
later on kind of blew up more so like in the production side um, right like you mentioned joss of- whedon was part of the script team who else <laughs> <clears throat> Um, I don't know. I'll have to pull it up. Well, there's also a lot of like those character actors in the movie. Oh that my you gosh, see, like, it's hilarious. Oh yeah, them. Patrick Damn. Fishler oh, was in this. I worked with him on. What did I work with him on? Something. But you also <laughs> had uh, Alan Ruck. Oh, the I worked. Guy from, I worked with um, Patrick Fishler on Doubt. But you had Sean Whalen, who's a, a character him. actor. Alan Ruck from uh, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Sean Whalen did those uh, Got Milk commercials with yep, Michael the Aaron Bay. Burr. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, you had Joey Slotnick, who like he's just that really tall, skinny Jewish guy. Right. He's, he's gotten progressively he's balder, stuff. but the the hair on the sides of his head has gotten curlier and bushier. Yeah, a lot of like you mentioned, <laughs> Pat, uh, Patrick Fischler. Like a lot of people, a lot of people who ended up being a lost were in this. It's it's crazy. A lot of big names, or not big names, but you know, and of people course, that... Philip Seymour Hoffman. Dude, his character was great. He was I super love funny. That character. Um, there's a point where like the first tornado, and they like they're all celebrating, even though Joe lost her truck. That they beat Carrie Elwes's team there, mm-hmm. and then <laughs> his character goes up to Carrie Elwes's truck and is like, "You're late. You're late. You're late. Give me a kiss." And he like jumps into their car <laughs> and like that. gives them a kiss. <laughs> Just a little bit of trivia for this movie, though. Uh huh. <laughs> so, this movie was the first movie put on DVD and the last movie on HD DVD. Oh. Okay. For that but, hot little six month window of HD DVD. <laughs> right. But there were some things that were edited out of the DVD release that were in the VHS <laughs> release. So, if people are interested and want to see Philip Seymour Hoffman's genitals. <laughs> They are in some cop, some VHS copies, not all, but some. So basically, the scene where he's like sitting in a lawn chair, uh, I guess he went commando, and you can totally see his genitals. Oh, they edited it out in the DVD release, but there are VHS copies that you can find oh, and see his genitals God. if you want. <laughs> I don't think anyone ever needs to see Philip Seymour Hoffman's genitals. <laughs> yeah, Especially I don't want to see now. it. No. Oh. <laughs> You can edit um, that out. <laughs> anything else that you want to talk about? I've pretty much hit all my notes. No, no. I mean, there there are a couple things that I didn't like, specifically because I was searching for them when watching this right. movie. But for the most part, like it's still solid for me. Yeah, it was a fun movie. I don't think it's like a great movie. Like it's not something that I feel I need to watch all the time. But like if you were watching it, like I. Like, I don't mind it. I love it. But um, but then again, like, I love watching Storm Chasers and that kind of stuff. So, eh. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an interesting topic. Like, tornadoes, while terrifying, are, are very interesting. Like, it's, it's terrifying how powerful these things are. And we still don't really know 100% what causes them. Like, we know it's, you know, hot air and then a thing of cold air going horizontally. And then the hot air pushes it up and it makes a funnel. But we don't really understand, like, there's a very specific, like, temperature that it has to be to do it. Like, there there really is no way of knowing what it's going to be. Yeah. Like, when they're going to have a tornado. they just like, okay, here's the weather. Be on a tornado watch. And a lot of times, tornado watches, nothing happens. Well, and I and think... a lot of times, they do. It's unpredictable. And it's dangerous. And we're completely vulnerable to it. And I think, you know, tornadoes are one of those things in real life that it's like the boogeyman. It's like a monster. It's legitimately terrifying because we have zero control over it. And especially these right. days with climate change and tornadoes are getting so much worse and so much more frequent, you know, it, it really drives home the magnitude of the issue because you can't ignore it. It's not like a hurricane somewhere in the Caribbean that mainland United States Americans can just forget about. <laughs> yeah. Um it's terrible. Yeah, I I would never want to be in a place where tornadoes happen nope. commonly like No. No. Well, like my my aunt and uncle's bus depot in Puerto Rico, like Hurricane Maria blew through of course, like caused devastation, but there were also tornadoes within that storm. Tornadoes yeah. destroyed the neighbor's building. It basically exploded, 
And that rendered like the majority of their fleet of buses inoperable. Like, yeah, it's awful. <laughs> if the hurricane doesn't get you, the tornadoes the are tornadoes certainly going to screw stuff up. Right. Yeah. Pretty scary stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right. Mm. So what are we watching <laughs> next time? So to celebrate, well, to celebrate Justice League coming out, which, you know, isn't going to obviously are be covered with us. Are we celebrating that? Kind of. <laughs> we're recognizing that for better or worse, it's here. It's occurring. It's occurring. Uh, we are covering Batman. We're having a huge Batman spectacular special on Remake Rewind next week. And we decided for this podcast that we were going to cover the Batman that most represents our childhood, which, of course, is the 1990, I think it's 1996, Batman Forever, Forever starring Val Kilmer. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to do the Batman of our childhood. And uh, yeah, for better we're, or worse. we're very excited for better or worse. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And, looking uh, forward to it. Where can our listeners find you, Miss Katrina? I'm all over the Internet at Katrinaocity. Go check out my YouTube channel. And then check out everything that's MDX Pods related at MDXPods.com. Also look out for daily updates at Instagram and Twitter. We are at MDX Pods. Please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash mdxpods if you want to help support the podcast and make it a little bit better and of course like and share all of our content on facebook twitter whatever social media you guys use and anytime you guys share the content it helps grow our audience and we really appreciate it yeah. thanks for listening thanks for listening bye <laughs>